The Fernald Feed Materials Production Center was a uranium processing facility located near the rural town of Fernald, about 20 miles northwest of Cincinnati. The Fernald plant fabricated uranium fuel cores for the U.S. nuclear weapons production complex from 1951 to 1989. During that time, the plant produced 170,000 metric tons of uranium metal products and 35,000 MTU of intermediate compounds such as uranium trioxide and uranium tetrafluoride. Radioactive and dangerous materials were released into the surrounding areas and communities of the Fernald site. Four concrete silos were created to hold radioactive material and buried in the ground. Two of the four silos contained high-risk radioactive material. Some of the materials that reached residents through these silos included ionizing radiation, soluble and insoluble forms of radiation, and other hazardous chemicals. There were also six large waste pits used for discarding dangerous chemicals and radioactive materials. These pits held 475,000 tons of waste, including uranium, thorium, and other radioactive contaminants. These pits were close to, and oftentimes came in contact with, the Great Miami Aquifer, a main source of drinking water for the greater Cincinnati area. The close proximity of these pits to the aquifer contributed to the contamination of drinking water. Byproducts of uranium production also reached residents through air dispersion and soil contamination. The true aftermath of the Fernald contamination will not be realized until many years from now. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has conducted a historical exposure characterization and developed dose estimation models through the Fernald Dose Reconstruction Project. The CDC found that 170,000 carriers of radiation were released from the silos. The CDC also found that lung cancer in the surrounding areas of Fernald increased from 1% to 12%, citing exposure to radon as the main reason why. The CDC's study of groundwater found that the Great Miami Aquifer is contaminated, and in some places contamination has spread up to a mile away from the plant. In the year 2000, it was found that residents and previous Fernald workers were still developing cancer at alarming rates. There have been many cases brought to Ohio courts against the U.S. government and private corporations funding the Fernald site, seeking justice for the victims and families of victims who have died of cancer. Only one case has settled. Plant workers won a $20 million settlement in 1994. Even though workers were crowned victors in the case, no amount of money will be able to reverse the damage done by Fernald. Cleanup of the Fernald site began shortly after the plant's closure in 1991. Cleanup consisted of six operable units and projects. The first two tasks centered around removal of the silos and disposal of radioactive materials present in waste pits. Next, the EPA focused on a facility's closure and demolition project that included the removal of all machines used to produce uranium and the destruction of most buildings. The EPA also focused on restoration of the Great Miami Aquifer. Residents near Fernal were provided bottled drinking water until the groundwater was pronounced safe for consumption. The EPA's most complex project was a soil and excavation project. Any contaminated soil had to be disposed of and separated from safe soil. This soil was disposed of at the on-site waste disposal facility that was established by the on-site access project. Cleanup was considered complete in the year 2006, a mere 15 years after the plant closed. Today, Fernald is open to the public and considered a nature preserve. A welcome center was built on the preserve to educate visitors about the plant and its past. The preserve itself is very desolate and many areas are restricted and unable to be accessed by visitors. Swimming, fishing, picnicking, and pets are prohibited inside the park. Remnants of the uranium plant are still present and can be seen throughout the park. Environmental monitoring is an ongoing project at Fernald. An examination of air, soil, and groundwater is conducted often to ensure that contamination is completely eradicated. Many paths have been established throughout the park for hiking. However, they are not always open to the public. 
Certain areas of the preserve are shut down periodically for testing. Animals like Canadian geese and field mice can be spotted in the preserve. It is hoped that animals will return to the preserve and thrive in the new protected environment. The ecosystems at Fernald are considered extremely fragile and precautions are taken to ensure that humans will not disrupt them. Walking off the designated pass is strictly prohibited and food is not allowed to be brought into the park. Fernald Preserve has a long way to go to being completely cleaned up. However, we hope that one day the preserve will look a lot less like this. And a lot more like this.